What's up? Today we're going to look at three hilarious times that Christians outwitted their atheist opponents. Be sure to stick around for the third time, which in my opinion is the most funny. Uh, but first, if you haven't yet subscribed, be sure to do so. Every subscription makes my heart flutter with delight. So please, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Alright, on to the first clip. In this clip, two New Testament scholars are debating each other. The Christian, Peter Williams, is arguing that the Gospels are reliable, and the atheist, Bart Ehrman, is arguing that they aren't. Bart Ehrman is arguing that there are lots of contradictions in the Gospels, but Peter Williams points out that Ehrman actually just contradicted his own statement from earlier in the debate. Peter Williams' point is that we should read people charitably and not look for contradictions when they're an easy way to reconcile what they're saying. For you, does just simply the fact that the different accounts have different details in them about the same general story if you like is is that if you like enough to say didn't happen no. is that is that no what, what's going on then no. what's what's the no the question is if somebody tells a story is the story right or not mm -hmm. and if two people tell stories that are at odds with each other not just different mm -hmm. i mean of course everybody tells a story differently but it doesn't mean they're both wrong you know four people can tell the same story, tell it very differently, and they're just, one person's telling one part of it, another's mm -hmm. telling another mm -hmm. one's emphasizing mm -hmm. one thing, one, and so, of course, that kind of thing happens all the time, and that doesn't mean, but if you've got stories that have differences that cannot be reconciled with one, one says one thing, one says the other, mm -hmm. not whether there's two women or one woman, mm -hmm. If, you, if two women go to the tomb in one story and then one woman goes to the tomb in another, then you just say, well, okay, this person's not mentioning the one, but there mm -hmm. were two. You know, mm -hmm. So there are ways mm -hmm. to reconcile. Sure. There are other things that simply can't be reconciled. Okay. Five minutes later. To reconcile it, you have to come up with a completely implausible scenario to reconcile it. You can reconcile anything. Let, let me just right, let me yeah, give okay. you an example okay. how you can reconcile uh, anything. Right. right now in America, they're celebrating uh, the uh, moon landing. One out of six Americans don't think there was a moon landing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have people say there was not a moon landing, and people say there was a moon landing. And so, well, how do you, those two, and most human beings would say, well, you know, it either is this or it's not that. Mm -hmm. If you really want to, you could say, oh, no, you can reconcile that. Because actually, uh, they, they first didn't get there, <laughs> and so they didn't land, but then they circled around the Earth again and went back, and they landed the second time. So there wasn't, and there was. Now, you could do that. But, like, is it really the okay. best explanation? Are, are you essentially trying to come up c with some theory that, that uh, matches I'm, two impossible I, I'm matching not stories? I'm tr not uh, trying to say we know exactly um, how things happened. I think there are multiple ways. I'm trying to use charity. Yeah. And the same charity I'd want to use on Bart. You see, Bart, a few minutes ago, said that some things cannot be reconciled. Then, a few minutes later, said, you can reconcile anything. And, <laughs> and I'd want to say, I have the charity to say that there's a coherence behind Bart's thinking, he'd want to qualify one in the light of the other, and that the way we should uh, deal with these things is we should, uh, you know, do the same with ancient sources. The reason Peter Williams' response was so clever is because he not only points out a contradiction in what Bart Ehrman said, but he also shows that we should read people more charitably and apply the same methodology to the Gospels. Clearly, Bart Ehrman didn't actually contradict himself, but if you're just looking at his words, they do contradict. But Peter Williams shows that you shouldn't be so strict on the Gospels when in everyday life we realize that that's unrealistic. In the next clip, William Lane Craig is using objective morality as an argument for God, and yet his atheist opponent seems to dodge this point by arguing that objective is a very vague term. However, he's debating a professional philosopher, William Lane Craig, who always makes sure to clearly define his important terms. And so it doesn't end up working out too well for him when he argues that William Lane Craig is being vague. A question that struck me as I was listening to them, you both made a lot about objective moral values, particularly you, Bill, and you had a major problem with the word objectivity, and a lot hung, hangs on that. Can you just go over what you mean by objective moral values, and can you then respond to what your problems are with it? Right, I'm thinking of something that is normative, but it is independently binding of any community of human persons or any individual human persons actually accepting it. Your response to that, Pete? My response is that there are quite a lot of non-theistic theories that 
would advocate such values. But I, my problem with the word objective, well, it can mean so many different things. It can mean you know, impartial, unbiased, uh, making judgments that takes all relevant factors into account and isn't distracted by noise, seeing things from different points of view, uh, measurable. You know, there are so many different uses of the word objective that I think uh, uh, unless one explicates very clearly what it means, um, it's just too vague to be useful. Bill? Well, that was why I stated clearly what I meant. <laughs> 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 Let's move on then. In the final clip, two Oxford scientists are debating each other, and they're arguing on whether or not faith can ever be backed by evidence. Richard Dawkins, perhaps the world's most famous atheist, is saying that if something is backed by evidence, you should never call it faith. But then John Lennox sets a clever trap for Richard Dawkins, which he falls for and ends up instantly contradicting himself. The look on his face says it all when he realized what he just did. Take a look. When you say faith is rational and evidence-based, I mean, if that were true, it wouldn't need to be faith, would it? I mean, if, the, if there were evidence for it, uh, why would you need to call it faith? You'd say just evidence. We only need to use the word faith when there isn't any evidence. No, not at all. I presume you've got faith in your wife. Is there any evidence for that? On yes, which plenty. You base it? Yes, plenty of evidence. Um, mm. I... <laughs> Thanks for watching, and again, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Every subscription helps this channel significantly since it's still a small channel, so thank you so much.